All right, so we're gonna make a composition with this amazing glow effect. So this is gonna be using the echo effect and the difference map. Let's dive into it. So we have our main layer here and we're gonna drag this into a new composition. So this is just a woman dancing, jumping around, having a great old time. Now we're gonna make a clean plate layer. We're gonna call this clean plate. Now we're gonna duplicate this layer. And we're gonna call this alpha dancer. Okay, so now we're gonna hide our top layer and we're gonna make our clean plate layer. So we're gonna make this time, enable timer mapping. We're gonna duplicate this and then we're gonna mask half of the scene out with our objective is to get rid of her. So when she moves to the other side of the frame, we're gonna to go to our other layer. So we're gonna do toggle hold keyframe right here. So this holds our frame. And then when she moves on to that side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to our mask. We're gonna mask out this. Then we're going to toggle hold keyframe as well. You could also go to time freeze frame, but I like to do it this way. So now I'm gonna take both of these clips and I'm gonna pre-compose. So there's our clean plate. And then there's our top layer. So this top layer, we're going to add the difference mat. What this is doing is basically taking the top layer and saying, what's the difference between this layer and that layer? And obviously the difference is this girl. So there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could keyframe it manually. You could use the track mat. You could use rotoscoping. Rotoscoping will be the most popular way to do this, but it's very, very labor intensive and it takes a long time to render out. If you want to learn more about rotoscoping, then check out my rotoscoping tutorial. This dives a little bit deeper into the roto brush. So we're going to teach you how to use the difference mat and, and the echo effect in this tutorial. In this scenario where you need to make a quick effect, you don't have a lot of time, but you want to spice it up. This is perfect. This is just a really cool tool to have in your arsenal. All right, back into it. So we have our dancer here. So my difference mat is I'm gonna drag it onto my top layer here. You can see it's not doing anything. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna select difference mat. Our difference layer would be our bottom layer. So basically you can play around with the tolerance. You could play around with the softness. I'm just trying to play around with this and get the cleanest one I can get. It's gonna be a little dirty, it's not gonna be perfect, but my goal is basically to just isolate her body so I could add the effect to it and I could add the effect underneath in the middle layer, basically. This looks pretty good, so you know you could obviously use tolerance and softness and blur. I'm just gonna take this. I could always adjust it later, you know, later on. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna call my middle layer glow effect. In the top layer, I'm going to keep as the alpha dancer. So now I'm going to hide my top layer. Then I'm going to add a, another cool effect. This is called pixel motion blur. I'm going to drag this onto my middle layer on top of this, which is our difference mat. So what pixel motion blur does is it basically adds motion blur to a scene that has very little or no motion blur. Even if it does, you could add more to it by playing around with the shutter angle, the shutter samples, and basically you can add motion blur to scenes. I use this a lot for speed ramping. So you can see the before and after here, it looks really good. So it's a little processor intensive. So I'm gonna take this effect. I'm gonna go to composition, pre-render. I'm gonna go to my settings. And I'm gonna make sure this is RGB plus alpha. And I'm gonna render it out in order to save you guys the trouble of having to watch this whole thing and render out. I uh, have a version here, magically. I'm gonna replace this middle layer with my pre-rendered version. All right, I'm just gonna remove these effects. And this is the layer that I rendered out prior to making this video. This has the motion blur on it. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for what we need it for. So this is our middle layer. We have our top layer on top of this, which is our difference mat, but it doesn't have the motion blur. So you can see it's a little more crispy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna refine this a little bit actually. Make a couple little changes to it. So if I go over here, when her arm crosses over the edges of the curtain, you could see that there's a little bit of a 
of a difference between the two. I think because her skin tones are so close to that color that the difference mat had trouble working with that. So this is a pretty easy solution um, because it's a static shot, super easy. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna call this curtain edges. I'm gonna get rid of my difference mat effect. I'm gonna take my mask and I'm just gonna mask out each of these edges and this will, doesn't have to be perfect. So there's our mask, got my curtain edges. You can see it's bringing her back. Um, one problem I have here that I just noticed is part of her is getting cut out because the difference mat isn't clear enough. So I'm gonna go to here and I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit more until you can bring back some of her face. If there's some stuff around her, that's fine. This way she's sharp. That looks good. Okay, so you could do this before or after your glow effect. The glow effect is gonna be, you know, motion blurred and, and glow on it. You're not even gonna notice any little missing parts, but the top layer we want to be sharp. This looks pretty good. All right, so I'm now gonna add an effect called the echo effect. I'll search echo, I'm gonna drop that on there. Now what this does is it basically echoes your pixels. Now this is a really cool effect. You could use this multiple ways. You could duplicate people. You could play around with time. It just takes a little creativity to figure out how you want to use it. But for my purposes, I'm going to use this as an echo effect. So, okay, so for echo time seconds, I'm going to put negative 0.1. For number of echoes, I'm going to put 40. And for starting intensity, I'm going to put 0.2. And then for decay, I'm going to bring that to 0.9. That was a big jump. So you play around with these depending on what your scene looks like. But this looks good for me. For echo operators, this is sort of a blending mode. So I'm going to go to screen for this one. And this is looking pretty good so far. So to spice it up a little bit more, I'm going to go to the glow effect. I'm going to add this to this. Then you can see that looks pretty crazy. My glow threshold. I'm going to bring that to 20%. My glow radius, I'm going to boost this up a lot. I'm going to boost this up a lot. All right, so glow intensity, I'm going to do two. And then composite original, I'm going to do on top. I'm going to change it a little bit. And then for glow colors, I'm going to change this to A and B colors. And what this does is it basically you could remap color A and color B. So I'm going to grab my color here and I'm going to change this to a purple and then color B. And this to blue. You could change your glow dimensions, horizontal, vertical, Keep mine at horizontal and vertical. You could play around with that as well. If you'd like to animate the color phase, you could play around with that. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And you could add blending modes to the actual layer. Um, you can just scroll through them here, see what looks best for what you need it for. I'm gonna keep mine at normal, but you know, you could do overlay if you want it a little more subtle, you want it to look more heavenly. You could change it to screen. You know, you can make it brighter, soft light. That makes it more subtle. But for me, I'm just going to keep it at normal. I'm just going to kick it there. I'm going to bring my opacity down to about 80. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. If you like this, subscribe, comment below, and we'll see you next time.